1982. Ronald Reagan was president. Tom Kane was governor of New Jersey. Michael Jackson's Thriller album was released. E.T. was a big hit at movie theaters. Epcot opened at Disney World. Also that year, something special happened right here at home in South Jersey. I was working at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and worked in intensive care with very, very ill babies. Um, often their parents weren't able to be there with them. They came from Delaware, uh, they came from New Jersey, um, and couldn't visit often. And so I took care of them and I began to wonder what would happen to those children when they went home. So I went into public health from there. I became a, a public health nurse in Camden, New Jersey. Both Our Lady of Lourdes Hospital and Cooper Hospital wanted to develop intensive care uh, nurseries. And they were both ready for that. They both wanted the nurseries to serve the babies in South Jersey. I had heard ab about this and the cooperative was begun. The cooperative was a solution to both of those hospitals wanting to own the certificate of need that would be granted for those intensive care nurseries and none of the other hospitals in South Jersey were interested in that, just the two in Camden. As a solution to that, the, the state developed this cooperative organization to hold the certificate of need and to have the hospitals in South Jersey all participate in developing a system for transport for those babies down in the southern part of the region and getting them up to the Camden hospitals. When I walked in the door, um, the cooperative was very busy training doctors and nurses to intubate little tiny babies. Uh, but I came in with a job that was focused on working with high-risk mothers and developing high-risk clinics both at Cooper and Lourdes and making sure that the mothers who were high-risk down in Cumberland County and Cape May County could get an appointment and be seen by a perinatologist up in Camden. So while the cooperative at that point was working on transport, developing transport systems, and making sure babies got safely transported, they were also forward-looking with the Department of Health funding to make sure kind of go upstream so that moms were better taken care of during pregnancy and there would be less need for transport of the babies. I knew about the cooperative because I worked in Philadelphia. And until the cooperative was formed, most of the babies from South Jersey came over to us in Philadelphia. I think what makes the difference for the care in South Jersey is that in fact, what's happened is that providers, providers at every level, whether it be the hospital or community services or ambulatory health services actually cooperate. People are just more willing to work together than I've seen anywhere. I came from Philadelphia and we never had that kind of cooperation. There was a director of nursing um, and there were two specialized nurses and um, a neonatologist were on staff. And I brought the thought of public health, which none of them had operated in at all. They were, they were highly specialized hospital staff, training other hospital staff. So what I was bringing to them in terms of the families I saw um, when I worked at the prenatal clinics and the history of the moms and what their living situations were and their inability to get transportation to and from the medical services they need to. And once they had their babies, the lack of access to services and formula and all the things were breastfeeding support they were unfamiliar with. That was the beginning of the cooperative's travel through public health and to what we are today, which is primarily um, the services we provide are prevention oriented. We had nine people when I started. We have a staff of 109. How did we get there? A lot of people have come together to solve problems, to solve them on the fly. By working with the cooperative, we wind up with a lot of synergy. So I think there is a cooperation that happens in the background that has been the thing that has the most impact on mothers and babies since 1982. The state always said then that what happens in the South couldn't possibly happen in the rest of the state. 
the South is different. But the Department of Health has come to understand that at least what happens here on, in perinatal services in the South is something they should look at closely and replicate other places. I expect to see that the cooperative will continue to be the leadership organization for perinatal services throughout the state. I never, as a public health nurse walking into the setting I did, um, imagined that the, the growth in services that we provide, the lives we've touched and changed through our services, I never imagined that we would have the opportunity we've had to serve our, the communities in the region. The relationships that our staff develop touch those families when needed, but also stay with them through the rest of their, the, their child's lives. The guidance we provide, the resources we provide and introduce them to will be there long after we leave their homes. But the way people responded and wanted to work with us was very, um, was, was very fulfilling to me. That was what I felt the best about when I was ready to look at retiring, is how many people had been attracted to the organization, how many people stayed and worked really, really hard to um, make it work at every level. People that stayed more than two years wound up staying more than five years because there were things that they wanted to accomplish and did accomplish. It was a stellar group, an amazing group of people that uh, continue today to work here. To be able to serve the families the way we do in the region, it's a gift. And that's just the beginning. I'm Helen Hannigan, Executive Director of the Southern New Jersey Perinatal Cooperative. The cooperative is marking 40 years of service to our neighbors here in South Jersey. We are passionate, we are committed, and we're working hard every day to ensure better maternal and infant health outcomes and to improve the wellness of our families and communities. It's a commitment we've upheld for the past four decades, and it's a promise we'll continue to keep.